Well, welcome to another edition of Next Wave. As we are pleased to be joined by Sharks prospect Ryan Merkley. Merks, how's things going? Yeah, it's been going well. Long break here. It's been a long off season. Well, lots of time to go still, but it's been enjoying. I've been with my family, a couple of friends. It's been good so far. You mentioned uh, your quarantine with your two sisters and your parents. Um, you said you guys haven't killed each other yet so far, so everything's uh, going pretty good in the in the Merkley household. Yeah, it's been going well. I mean, for a while there was pretty strict, and we weren't really leaving our house there for like a month, month and a half there. I mean, got to see each other lots. I mean, made up for a lot of missed time with all the hockey and stuff. You get to miss out on with the family time, so it's been good. So let's uh, let's go into a little bit of your hockey career. You played in the Ontario Hockey League. Um, just finished up your season, unfortunately, like everybody went through a little bit premature. But you played this past season in London with the London Knights. Had a tremendous year. Uh, now I'm sure you're looking forward to uh, the professional side of things. Got a small taste of it um, this past season or prior to this past season, getting a couple games in the American Hockey League. But you're from Oakville, Ontario, about 30 minutes outside of Toronto, uh, very close to Guelph, where you were originally drafted first overall back in 2016. Did you consider Guelph as your hometown team and how exciting – was it to be able to play that close to home when you kicked off your junior career? Yeah, I live in the middle. I think the Midwestern Conference there is like the little bubble there. We're all close to home. So I, I would consider Mississauga my hometown team there. But yeah, Guelph was perfect for us right down the highways, 40, 40 minutes from my parents every Friday night. So, I mean, that worked out well for the first two and a half years there. It was nice, nice, close, easy to come home if you ever missed your family or anything. But it was awesome. The year before you got drafted, or by uh, by the by Guelph, you were uh, Greater Toronto's Greater Toronto Hockey League U18 Player of the Year, and you followed in the guys footsteps of the guys like Strom, McDavid, and, and Richie. What was it like receiving that honor and joining a group of guys like that who have had such great success at the NHL level? Yeah, it's crazy to be recognized in a class like that. I mean, such high. Bit the big talented names and guys who've done such great things in their career. I mean, back then I remember being like 15. I mean, you don't even really think about that stuff. I was just going out there playing games, having fun with my teammates, you know, having fun in the locker room and little stuff like that. But I mean, it's crazy. I think about the guys like McDavid and Dylan Strom and stuff like that. It's awesome. When you first came into the OHL, for a lot of players, it takes at least a year for you them to adjust to not only the speed, but the physicality. And you're not one of the, the biggest guys in terms of physical stature, yet you jumped right in and you're one of the top rookies in that league, um, really kind of hit the, the ground running. How did you adjust so quickly to that level and, you know, using your skill set, using, you know, your speed and, and your intelligence um, from the blue line, how did you kind of incorporate that right away once you kind of joined the ranks of the OHL? We were a very young team. I think we had 11 rookies that year. I mean, so they gave us a lot of opportunity. I mean, coming from last place and into that year. I mean, we had some older guys, but we weren't. We were the youngest team in the league. So I mean, our younger guys got a lot of the opportunity. I mean, it took me a while for sure. I was getting hit hard often. I mean, guys would be taking runs at me. I'd be getting hit hard. I was only like 160 pounds. But I mean, I think my skating and my head, I mean, my vision and stuff really helped me out. I mean, I was like. Five, ten and a half, 160 pounds, 165 pounds on a good day. So, I mean, it was, took time. It took a couple months, you know, a couple weeks to get going in the groove. I mean, coming in, I just turned 16 and playing against guys 19, 20 years old. I mean, they took physical advantages on me for sure. So I had to figure out other ways. You know, the Sharks drafted you in the first round, uh, 21st overall back in 2018. Extremely highly touted prospect. You know, a guy who really fits the modern game, the way you can move the puck, the way you can skate. Um, you know, looking back on that process, did you always think San Jose was the place you would land and, you know, walk us through that moment and just draft day as a whole? Yeah, I wasn't too sure. I was certainly confident. I mean, they're showing a bit more interest than most of the teams for sure. There's a few other teams in that mix, but I had a good feeling. I met with Dougie, I think, at the, at the combine there right after the Wingate. Uh, so that was the first time I got to meet him. And then I went out for uh, lunch with Marchman, I think, a couple of weeks before had lunch talked but I mean it was nervous sitting there in the crowd I mean up there you got a lot of great names of like the remaining prospects still to be taken and you're always thinking running numbers through your head and then in that moment it was just a blur you're sitting there nervous sweating and Berkey called it out quick and I was couldn't believe it so after you get drafted you come into Sharks development camp 
have a good camp. And shortly thereafter, you end up signing your entry level contract. Was it nice to just get that out of the way? So it wasn't really hanging over your head, heading into your junior season. Yeah, for sure. I just, I think I let my agent take care of that stuff. I'm new to that stuff. Not really sure how quick or how, what's supposed to happen really. So just let it up to him. And fortunately it was done quickly and I got it done nice. So, I mean, I was happy with that to get it over with and really not have to worry about it or stress about it. You know, looking back at development camp, being able to be in the, in the room with your peers and, and being with guys that you'll have as teammates in the future, uh, but also being in training camp as well, being around the likes of, I know a guy you've looked up to um, throughout your career, a guy like Eric Carlson, even being around, you know, Jumbo, uh, being around guys, guys of that stature, even younger players like Timo Meyer. What was that like to be able to measure your game and just be in the midst of, of guys who have done it for as long as they have? No, oh, it's incredible getting in that dressing room when you're sitting beside like Burnsy, Carlson, looking across at like Kutcher, Thornton, you know, a guy like Marlow would be in there early at camp when I was there. But yeah, I mean, it's certainly nerve wracking for sure. I remember, I think it was my first year, I went to go live with Burnsy for a couple of weeks early there. And I think it was just me, Carlson, Thornton and Burnsy on the ice and making that first pass to Carlson in the first practice. I think I put it right in the skates. I felt terrible. Just the little stuff like that, but you know, they make you more comfortable coming in the next year and you're just talking to you nice and easy. You know, they remember me, it's awesome. Do you still picture yourself um, being around guys like that? Yeah, it's crazy to think about. I mean, I still feel like I'm young and 19 years old, but I mean, being around guys like that, it's awesome. I mean, watching Burnsy before and after practice and Jumbo, those guys, what they do to their bodies, I mean, it helps me and helps me realize what it takes and what they do every single day and day out. It's incredible. So you mentioned being able to live with Brent Burns while you were here for a little bit. What was that experience like? I mean, everybody knows Burns. He's off the ice and he's got this big personality and he loves to cook and, and he works out like crazy. What was that like for you? Oh, yeah, I was terrified. I mean, he's a big body, big presence. I mean, a lot of energy is awesome. I mean, he was so much fun to be with and be around. I mean, hanging out with him at the rink and then going home with him. I mean, he's always treating his body well, eating well. I mean, I got it pretty good there for the two weeks I was with him. But, I mean, it's just crazy getting to see a guy like that and his caliber and seeing how he works day in, day out. But, I mean, Cohen has an 18-year-old kid, and he's a former Norris Trophy winner probably a year or two before that, probably at the high peak of his career. I mean, it's crazy. He would spend time with me and take the chance or the time to get to know me and stuff and welcome me, make me more comfortable. I mean, it helped me a lot for sure. I've got to ask, did he ever try to – get you to eat any of that uh, meat that he, he hunted on his property in Texas? And were you ever skeptical on what you're exactly eating? I was, no, I trust him. I mean, the meat was incredible. What he served up was obviously it was high-end quality meat, but I was more skeptical because I was watching the videos of his ranch in Texas with all the snakes and stuff. Like, that was my biggest fear is the snakes. And I, I saw the basement video of him and all the snakes, but thank God that's not there in, uh, in San Jose. Yeah, I don't think I could do the, do the snakes either. That, oh, uh, that is not uh, my cup of tea. Um, going into this past season, you know, a big year for you uh, at the junior level, trying to make, you know, make a big impact um, before making that next step in your game. We mentioned it was cut a little bit short. Everybody dealt with it with COVID. But one part of your game you really wanted to improve on was your defensive side of the game. And as you look at the numbers, it certainly did improve. But what were the small kind of details that you had to adjust in your game to make, you know, make big strides in terms of being a high-end defender? I think it was just closing my gap, getting up the ice quicker when we had the puck. I mean, so when we would turn it over, I'd be right there to stop and transition the other way. And active, good active stick, always having to stick, stick on puck. But I think just with my gaps closing, like normally when we turn the puck over, I'd be hanging back a bit more and, I'd give that forward six, 10 feet of time and speed. So I think how getting up in the rush and closing the gaps up quick were big for me. Fans have had the opportunity to see you play. You've spent some time with the Barracuda. You've played in a preseason game for the Sharks. You've been here for development camp. So most people may be familiar with your style of play, but how would you describe your style of play and what you're looking to bring to the professional level? A high offensive, kind of fiery. I mean, I like to play with my emotions sometimes. I get it hot in the game. But I, I like playing with the puck, having fun. I like to model myself after like an Eric Carlson, Chris Letang type of D-man. 
I like to be on the power play and create chances for our forwards and set up set up my forwards. You mentioned playing, you know, using your emotions to your advantage, you know, in a sense. You don't want to get away from that at all. I mean, I think that's what makes you the special player you are. I'm sure, you know, you want to almost walk a fine line, but is that something the Sharks have told you is, hey, we want you to be you. We want you to play your game, although there are some things that maybe you can fine tune as you evolve as a player, but they probably don't want to change you, you know, too much. Is that right? Exactly. I think they like that part of the game, but just keeping it within control and within reason for sure. When I was younger and I didn't have that much control. I mean, this year I thought I did a way better job, a great job this year handling that with all that in those areas in regards to keeping my composure and cool. I don't think that's been a good area, but I know they were hard on me for that. That was a big reason, but hopefully we did better this year. You, uh, you got a taste of pro with the Barracuda a couple of years back, we mentioned at the at the end of not this past season, but the season prior. You also played some games in the NHL in the preseason. How big was that for you? And kind of again using it as a measuring stick on where you were at. Oh, well, exactly. It was so exciting. It was awesome to play against guys like that. I mean, I think my first game was Anaheim, and after my first year, I got drafted as a guest laugh and Perry and stuff. So those are my favorite guys growing up. My dad's favorite player. So then just being lining up at center ice and guest laughs right there. I remember first shift trying to hit him and he didn't even look at me. He's a big body, but stuff like that. I mean, just getting to compare yourself against the best in the world and get the feel for the speed and the skill and the size and how really big and fast they are. I remember this year, Richie got me good. And I think it was my second shift. I never felt a hit that heavy or powerful in my life. Do you, Stay quiet when you're on the ice. I don't know if you're a big talker on the ice generally, but in a situation like that, are, are you kind of biting your lip a little bit? Are you trying to stay quiet, not, you know, awake the beast, or are you just trying to be yourself? I think coming as a young guy, I'm, I'll be more quiet and shy. You know, I'm not trying to stir up anything right now. I mean, I'm kind of young, kind of light, not the strongest right now. So I don't think I need would want guys stepping in for me right now. <laughs> So there's lots of comparisons been made to your game and, and the way you play is, and you mentioned looking up to guys like Carlson and Luke Tang. Are there, are those guys who you've tried to model your NHL game after your hockey game after, or if not those two, who are you looking at to try to mimic into your game? Yeah, I think those two would be the guys I'd always watch on TV. Like I'd always be watching Chris Letang or if Carlson was ever playing in Toronto, I'd make sure my dad would always get me tickets and go watch him play and watch Latang play. So I'd just be watching those guys every morning, every night, just trying to model and see what they do to make them great. Those are pretty good guys to try to model your game after. Let's change gears a little bit here and uh, go to a, you know more lighter questions, give fans an opportunity um, to see who Ryan is and a little bit of his personality away from the ring. We'll start with a hockey, a general hockey related question, uh, but it is about your sisters. You've got two sisters, as you mentioned, you're living with them right now. Um, both of them play hockey, one at Bemidji State, the other one at Harvard. Uh, what parts of their game, if any, do you wish you had in your game? <laughs> uh, probably my younger sister. She could score a lot. She wouldn't move her feet very much, but uh, she could find the back of the net somehow, which is pretty, pretty good for a girl. When you guys compete, you always hear about siblings competing maybe down in the basement and getting physical. Two sisters, they play the game. I'm sure they're tough. Um, did you guys battle pretty hard down, down in the basement or wherever it was? Oh, yeah. So I have a sister that's six years older, but I have a younger sister who's only, I think, 14 months younger. So she would always be stuck in that, and we'd get some fiery games down there again. <laughs> we'd get heated for sure. Oh, yeah, so she'd just sure. normally end up strapping off the pads, ended up in tears or something. I'd get too angry or celebrate too much in front of her. her parents would step in. So everybody knows, you know, hockey players, and we know in our locker room, guys have game day routines, superstitions, things that they follow religiously uh, on a game day. Are you a superstitious guy? Do you have these routines? Is there anything you have to do on a game day and keep it the same every single time? I try to stay pretty loose, but I just like my pregame nap as long as I get a couple hours in before the game. I'm normally all right. I'll be happy, but not too strict on anything, kind of take it easy. I don't want to add any pressure or be worried about something extra. Well, if you end up playing for the Barracuda, you may have to get used to some of our earlier starts. We have quite a few games that start at one because we play double headers. So 
maybe not a, a morning or an afternoon nap for you, but have you ever played any games in the afternoon? And uh, is that something maybe you, you look forward to or have you even put any thought into? No, I think I'll have to get better. I think in my OHL career, I've, I've struggled with the day games, getting up, getting ready. But, I mean, it'll be, yeah, I guess it'll come with just adapting and taking time, right? Getting the groove of it, getting settled in for sure. Well, you grew up in, in the Toronto area, obviously a hockey hotbed. Um, if you don't play the game as a youngster, um, you're kind of an outlier. When did you start playing hockey, and when did you realize that this could be something you could pursue professionally? I mean, I think I, my parents got me into organized hockey around three years old, it was. But I was always, always skating when I was one, two, outdoor rink in my backyard. My dad would always make every Christmas or every winter. But, I mean, honestly, growing up, I knew, like, I didn't worldwide or, like, NHL draft good. I wasn't too sure, really too focused, you know. I was just going out there having fun, playing in hockey tournaments, you know. Missing that Friday class was exciting, you know, going on a road trip with the guys. But that's all I really thought about. I guess it would be the draft in the OHL. I was like, okay, it's kind of getting serious. People are investing a lot of time and money into this. So I would say the OHL draft was, like, a big step. So I a two-part question for you. You've played, obviously, lots of hockey so far in your career, played with lots of talented players. Who is the most talented player you've ever played with and the most talented player you've ever played against? I would uh, – Alexi Lafreniere would probably be the number one guy that I've played with within my age group for sure. And the stuff he did was just incredible. Like, the skill and his compete level. I mean, he's got the high-end skill and high-end compete level. You put him on the PK, power play. He's high-end all around. I mean, he's an awesome guy to be around with, fun guy. And then probably the – I would say the one exhibition game, Johnny Gaudreau. I mean – that guy's skill was <laughs> elite. I mean, he's, I remember him pulling a spinner ammo off behind the net and wrapping around for a goal. I couldn't believe it. And he's just so quick and agile, so shifty. It was fun to play against him. You mentioned Lafreniere. He is the consensus number one overall pick in the upcoming NHL draft that's going to occur after this 2014 playoff. Give us a little bit of a scouting report on this guy and what type of, uh, what type of talent he is. No, he's a horse. I mean, you look at his numbers in the in the queue. I mean, he's putting up a goal a game and assist a game. But I don't like his. He's a powerful guy. He's a big guy. He hits. He's not afraid of the playing big, playing tough against those guys. So I mean, I think he's got it all. He can skate, and scores. He's very competitive and wants to win. I think he takes it personal. What are you doing away from the rink? What are your favorite activities when you're not playing? Right now, I got a golf membership it was cheap just 10 kilometers from my house so i've been golfing every day with a couple of my buddies a couple of former teammates so. get pretty good yeah i can we keep score every day obviously but you can see the numbers on everyone's end getting way better so you spent some time in peterborough and you played with zach lant who recently signed a contract with the sharks organization we asked him this question we want to ask you do you have any stories any funny stories that you can share about your time with Galley that might be uh, suitable for this setting. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of great stories. I mean, he's a funny guy. I mean, he's, a, he's different. He's a funny guy. I mean, we've got a lot of great stories together. I mean, it's tough on the spot to be sharing. <laughs> I honestly can't think of one right now. But, I mean, there's, we've had he, our good times. He didn't have one either. So. Yeah, yeah, we've had our good times for sure. But I don't know. You did say you were a funny guy, though. So uh, yeah, so we get we'll, along. Uh, we're waiting for some waiting for some humor in the, in the <laughs> locker room uh, when you guys all get yeah. together uh, in San Jose. Um, continuing along here, um, you mentioned the, the galley question, but uh, if you had an unlimited supply of one thing for the rest of your life, what would you choose and why? So one item that you could have an unlimited amount of, what would you choose and why? Oh no. <laughs> I was gonna say chicken nuggets, but there'd be a lot of things we could go here. <laughs> Food wise, but mm. chicken nuggets. So the sharks would probably hope that that's grilled and not fried. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well one yeah, I'd probably go around there. Some are food related, some are nice. Okay, what are you dipping the nuggets in? Are you uh, are you a, a barbecue guy? Are you a buffalo sweet sauce? Sweet sauce. Sweet. Uh, yeah, what type of sauce? Sour. Sweet and sour. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good choice. 
Yeah. Yeah. So obviously during this pandemic, people have had a lot of time to hang out at home, catch up on movies. You got a favorite movie of all time? If so, what is it and why? My movie was probably Lone Survivor. I mean, I don't know, Mark Wahlberg there. Probably watched it when I was 13. But I just love those type of movies, war movies, and back up against the wall. And just and it was a real-life movie, right, based on a true story, stuff like that. So, you know, fires me up for sure, those types of movies. Okay, Did you have the book that it was made after? No, no, I haven't read the book, no. I probably should. You mentioned you like movies that are based on true stories. Let's go sports-related. What would be your favorite sports movie of all time? Oh, that'd be the Miracle on Ice. Even though I love it. A Canadian oh, yeah. Lake of the Miracle on Ice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's great. It's awesome. Great sound I love bite. that movie. Is. It, it is. a classic. I could still watch it every day here now. It's, that's, awesome. yeah, it's a, it's a heck of a flick. I didn't know if it, it quite pulled at the, the, the strings to a Canadian as it would to us Americans, but I guess. It, I think it was just beating Russia. Just beating <laughs> Russia. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Common enemy. Everybody's everybody <laughs> wants to beat Russia when it comes to hockey. So yeah. I think that's big. I guess it's it, it, they could take it as that being uh, flattering because yeah they exactly. want to get that's uh, that's a compliment. Um, moving on, um, what are three things on your bucket list? Mm, I would love to go travel the world. One, just go see a bunch of different things I've never seen over on this side of the world. Like different animals and stuff, different types of cultures of the world, different types of people, just see how they live. But I don't know, I think skydiving is going to be one of them. I think we're going to get that one off the bucket list this summer. It'll be kind of scary. Terrified of fights, but it'll be fun. But another one, oof. I don't even know a third one. It's well, awesome. Swimming with sharks, would you do that? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's another one. Uh, <laughs> one. That's appropriate, too. Yeah, new, yeah. new content idea. Let me write that down. Yeah, <laughs> that was the one I've, I've been waiting on. I want my parents to go on a vacation, bring me to the next thing. I just want to go shark diving, go swim in the ocean, cage. Are you going cage or cage free? Oh, cage for sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm terrified of even fish. <laughs> <laughs> if you could go out to dinner with any two celebrities, uh, of your choosing which two would you choose let's say mark Wahlberg. he's pretty up there and donald trump i mean it'd be pretty exciting <laughs> pick his brain a little bit see what he's thinking sit down and have a conversation with that guy be fun <laughs> all right hey i was not expecting the, the trump answer but that's Me either. A, i mean i would say he's at the top <laughs> of the list in terms of well-known people yeah um, well-known people just getting to know him would be pretty cool i think <laughs> Uh, what's your go-to karaoke song? What are three things that people wouldn't know about you unless you told them? I think I'm pretty open, but three things. I mean, people think they're not like, <laughs> no, that's a tough question. I feel like a lot of people, I don't know, think they know me. Try to get, it's just hard. I feel like I'm so out there and so open. Everyone knows what I'm doing, what my life's like. It's hard. Got any hidden talents? No, I'm, I'm pretty boring. Like, I just wake up, work out, golf, <laughs> hang out with my buddies, and that's about it. Nothing too exciting going on right now. You fish at all? No, I'm not a big fisher. Not yeah, a fisher? Okay. No. The reason why I ask is because they've got the NBA bubble right now. I don't know if you've noticed, but a, a few of the guys have been fishing at uh, Disney World um oh yeah, so, yeah. I, I, don't, I thought maybe i thought maybe that was just a, a thing among athletes um during their free time okay no fishing uh another question for you if you had uh one meal that you had to eat every day for the rest of your life you mentioned chicken nuggets that may be your answer but uh maybe we could get uh, answer one b uh if you had to eat one thing for the rest of your life uh, chicken fingers and fries would be my number one <laughs> go-to but what side be probably just a nice easy Steak from the keg, that'd be my favorite steak. Filet mignon with mashed potatoes is good with me. Yeah, okay. the keg is a good spot. We don't go up to Canada too often, at least oh, at the AHL, but yeah. times we have been to Winnipeg, we have uh, certainly went to the keg. I was uh, oh, yeah. recommended, and um, it, uh, it certainly lived up to the bill. The keg is a good spot. One of my favorites. I know getting on the ice and, and everything during this time right now hasn't been easy. 
what have you been doing to stay busy and stay active in hockey shape and how has it kind of affected your normal offseason plans? Yeah, I think it was kind of tough at the start when the rinks were closed, right? There wasn't much you could really do about it. But right now I'm skating once a week out in Toronto with my skating instructor, just with my other old D partner, Jack Lyons. But other than that, we've got a gym in the garage. We were able to get by a squat rack and all that stuff, luckily, nice and quickly. And so I'm out on the track every day at six in the morning with Gally and a few other of my old teammates running with uh, Mark McCoy, um, former Olympic track guy. So, I mean, we've been out there five days a week, just like a normal summer, I feel like, but a lot more time off. I got I to gotta leave you with this question. Um, you, you live with Burnsy for a little bit. I don't know if when we saw you a year and a half ago, if you could grow the beer that you've got <laughs> rocking right now. But was this a, a quarantine thing? Did it all of a sudden sprout up during quarantine? No, I think I've always been growing it. I've always tried. Even when I was 16, it was embarrassing. I always tried. I always let her grow out. But, yeah, especially with the quarantine now, I mean, I'm just hanging out with the guys I work out with and my family members. I mean, I let her go. No reason. No yeah, reason. It's, yeah, no need to keep up with it right now. Are you just going to kind of let it go and, until maybe your time that you uh, that you return to San Jose? Or are you just no – Yeah, I'll let, her, I'll let her go. I'll probably have some fun with it. Maybe get a little mustache or something. Leave a little on the chin. I don't know yet. Yeah, you're getting endeared to your, uh, your new teammates maybe if you come in with a nice beard. Oh, yeah. Sounds good. <laughs> what is uh... – I guess my, my last question for you is what are you looking forward to most about coming into San Jose and, and playing in San Jose full time? I'm just getting that chance. I mean, I've been waiting to play pro hockey, play in the NHL. I mean, I think it would just be a dream come true if I got to live that out every day for however long I get to. I mean, just getting there and being in that room, hopefully one day I'll be able to play for the Sharks and make it a living. I mean, it's what I'm excited for is to play the hockey and get out there. And the weather, too, is a bonus, not having any more winters. I'll take that. Maybe a little bit more golf. Uh, oh, yeah, a lot more here. golf. <laughs> well, man, we, 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 can't, uh, we can't thank you enough for joining us. We're excited uh, excited for you to get to San Jose. Obviously, you know, you're a highly touted guy um, with a lot of skill. We can't wait to see it firsthand. Obviously, stay safe. Hopefully, we'll see you sooner rather than later. And nobody really knows when the season will start. But hopefully, uh, it'll start when uh, the NHL right now has a projector, which is around December. So, um, hopefully we'll see you around then. Um, in the meantime, though, stay safe. Don't Thank kill you. your sisters. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you, guys. Have a good one.